We're taking a side trip to the coast, to the Derwin International Welsh Cobb Centre and Museum, to meet with Ivor Lloyd, whose family has been breeding Welsh cobs for generations. So you've been working with Welsh cobs your entire life? Yes, I have, and my father before me, my grandfather. The stud farm has a small museum dedicated to the history of the breed. Ivor points out some of the more personal photographs of his family's history with these special horses. And that's my father with the original mare of the stud. There's a photo of me uh, on holiday on a Shire mare when I was a little bit younger than I am now. With your dog? Yes. Your dog's on the horse with you. Yes. Shows how strong those Welsh cobs are, oh, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> yes, of course. They're very, very strong. So is this the type of work they would have they yes. would have started out doing that? So yes. That's, how yeah. did they get so strong? Well, we can trace the breed back to 900. And um, I believe that they've been roaming the Welsh hills from before that because they've acclimatized themselves to this particular part of the country, especially. And it's, it's pretty rough here in the winter. So they lived out on the hills yes. all year round? All year round, all year round. And if I can take you up to that particular photograph there, it's my father raking the hay, which was a very dangerous occupation because if you fell down in front of that machine, there was no hope for you, no hope at all. But usually the cob was so intelligent that they would sense that there was something wrong and they would pull up if you were lucky. It's great that you have been able to save all these photographs from your, from your history with these horses. I love, I love this one right there. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I could turn the clock back. Now it's time to see these Welsh cobs in action. We pass by the fields where the foals and their mothers reside and move on to see some of the stallions getting exercised by the farm's trainers. Well, the main movement with the Welsh cob is the um, walk and the trot. These horses walking and trotting. They'll just go all day. They'll go all day. These two stallions are three-quarter brothers. They're from the same mare, but by two different stallions. You see the spirit in them now? <laughs> the one on the left has only been back in work for three days, so he's behaving very, very well. But he is um, showing off to his uh, three-quarter brother now that he's the boss, or so he thinks. I think we know who's in charge here. I think so. <laughs> I think so, yes. And of course, in the spring, when it's the mating season, you wouldn't dare have two stallions in the same field, or you'd be asking for trouble. Because they, they um, go back into the wild, really, um, in herd fashion. Uh, they defend their herd. It's only a top man like Derek that could bring this horse back into riding in three days. I was going to say, I, yeah. wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be a job I wouldn't for like me. to chance it. <laughs> Everything that you look for in a Welsh cob, there it is, against the skyline. I wouldn't exchange him for all the Queen's jewels. <laughs> 